All right. I believe that the um, you know waiting room should have let everyone in. So let me know if you're not seeing my screen here, um, but we'll go ahead and get started. So thanks for joining today, everyone. Um, we're going to kind of go through some training and just some keys to success as far as how you can implement this into, you know, your agency processes. Um, so kind of just to start off, I do want to kind of talk about those points of accessibility and, you know, how to really inject that connect link into, you know, any of those avenues that your clients are trying to get connected to you. So whether that is your website, um, your email signatures, as you're emailing people throughout the day, sending them the link, sending them invites, we really just want Glovebox wherever your clients are trying to connect with you. Um, Secondly, I want to just talk about implementing it into your processes. So, you know, every phone call, every email throughout the day is just a great opportunity to, you know, talk about Glovebox, send your clients an invite, upload a document for them, especially for those service calls where, you know, they're just requesting that document that you sent them six months ago. They just lost the email, you know, whatever that may be. Um, so definitely want to implement it into your processes, especially with new clients. You know, where can you fit Glovebox into your onboarding? Um, thinking about, you know, if you send a welcome letter, um, put Glovebox in there, make sure that they get connected or create a new account for that brand new client and add their documents. So that way they're just set up and ready to go from the beginning. They have everything they need. So they won't be calling you a couple months down the line just for a document request. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to HQ because I think that is really where we're going to kind of go through these workflows here. Um, so on the overview page, and if for whatever reason you are on this training and you don't have access to your agency's HQ, you'll just want to get with your owner so that way they can add you. They'll have the ability to add you to the Teams tab here. Um, but on this overview page, I do like to point out this is where the Connect link lives. So how I was talking about, you know, if putting it on everything, on your website, your email signatures, um, especially if you work with like a CRM where you might send out some templated emails, um, automated, whether this is at renewal or maybe you do a newsletter, whatever it may be, we'll want to add the connect link to any of those emails. So that way you kind of just have those automations working for you on the back end as well. So um, right here is where you can grab that link. If you click it, it'll just copy to your clipboard, but definitely important to just know where that is and to utilize it where you can. So that way, you know, we're connecting clients wherever they may be communicating with you. I do want to jump over into the client tab here. And just to mention, sorry, I didn't add this at the beginning, but if you have any questions or anything, feel free to put them in the chat. I have Morgan from my team on that's going to be managing that. So she'll be able to answer any questions that you have. Um, but I'm just in our clients tab here. So, you know, as you're aware, we have those different filters, our verified users, um, users that have clicked that link, accepted an invite, connected one way or another. Um, invited is going to be those pending users. So you've sent them an invite. They just haven't quite accepted it yet. And then ultimately the unverified. So this is where your clients are going to live if they have not accepted an invite. But kind of just going into your daily processes as I was discussing, you know, really implementing it. I always recommend that you bookmark HQ or have it up in the background uh, throughout the day. So that way, when you do have clients calling in, you can quickly jump and search for them. You can search by name, email, phone number, um, whatever that may be. You can find them and then just send them an invite right away. So that's kind of what I always recommend, you know, jump in and search for the client on every phone call you're getting, even if they are, you know, calling to discuss something else. It doesn't hurt at the end of that call to be like, also, I see here you're not a user of our app. I'm going to go ahead and send you an invite. Once you get that into your inbox, go ahead and accept it. And your policy and your policies and your documents are going to be waiting for you there. 
Um, in order to add a document to a client's glove box, an invite just needs to be sent. It doesn't necessarily need to be accepted. So once you send the invite, it's going to open up this document drop portal for you. And that's where you can, you know, drag and drop those documents and it's going to instantly reflect for the client on their side. So definitely jumping into the clients tab daily, you know, searching for clients, sending out invites as they're calling in and needing stuff. It really helps with that adoption percentage. And then, you know, ultimately reducing your service uh, burden over time. So that's really what our goal is, right? We want to set your clients up with success. We want to supply them with what they need. So that way, you know, they aren't calling you and taking up your time, taking up your phone lines, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into my test account here that I've created. So as you can see, it's letting me know I'm an active policy holder. It shows that check. So I'm a verified user. Um, I went ahead and just kind of created a policy here. So I added my travelers. Um, I added this kind of test policy, if you will, or I was kind of treating it as a quote. So you can also utilize, a, you know, glove box for prospecting. You can get prospects added to the app and upload their quoting documents. Um, but as you can see here, this drag and drop has opened up for me since I'm a verified user. And this is really where you're going to be able to quickly and easily upload those documents. So I just have this on my desktop here. I'm just going to drag it over it's going to instantly reflect. So it shows that green check letting me know that it uploaded. Um, you can see here that the source of this document was manually added. With these three dots over here, we give you the ability you can view, download, or delete the document. So if you know you ever need to delete it, it is going to remain in there until you as the agency does. So you know if there's old documents, maybe at renewal, you might have to jump in and delete that old document and upload the new one. Um, but we also have this edit functionality. So this is going to allow you to update the title of the document. So if it downloads as something that the client wouldn't recognize what it it is you can always change the um you know the name of it and then we also give you the ability to categorize so as you can see here a lot of different use cases for document upload you know it can be those things that people call in for all the time especially id cards or deck pages um, on the commercial side of things, certificates and endorsements. But you can really utilize this however you want. So you can drop renewal documents or welcome letters, or like I mentioned, quotes for prospects, um, billing, cancellation, really anything that you want to upload in here, you can do so. Um, as soon as a document is dropped into a client's glove box, they're going to receive an email notification from us, letting them know that a document's been added and will, you know, kind of lead them to open up their app or if they're on their desktop, we'll take them to the client portal. Um, but it's really a great feature for driving traffic because, you know, you drop that document, they get the notification, jump into the app. And then they realize, oh, yeah, I can pay my bill through here or I can request service on my policy or I can refer out, you know, your agency's business to friends and family. So great for definitely driving those usage points. So I went ahead and categorized this as a quote. Um, now, when I jump up to view glove box. This is going to be essentially kind of hijacking the client's account. So you would see exactly what the client would see on their end. Um, when I click into my travelers here and go into that auto quote, uh, quote policy I created, um, this is where I can, you know, pay a bill, make a claim, or if it is an auto, I can request roadside help. Um, but now when I scroll down in the policy document sections, that quote is right there for me. And I can click into this. Um, I can download it, share it, email it, print it, save it, whatever I need to do. And that can be done in the app as well as desktop. Um, so as you can see here, the categories, they make it so they'll kind of go into different folders. So just for example here, if I add an ID card here and then categorize this, oops. There we go. And if I categorize this as an ID card and then jump back in, you can see kind of why it's important to, you know, actually pick those categorizations. Otherwise, you know, everything's going to be under other and it's going to be kind of a large folder. Uh, so 
definitely want to categorize them, but as you can see, it's instantly reflected. So then the client just has everything that they need, you know, whether it's one of our carriers that has the active policy monitoring or not, you can upload documents to any policy. That does kind of lead me into our two different types of carrier connections. So if anyone here is new and they're not familiar, uh, we have two different carrier connections that we supply. So we have the live policy monitoring, and that is where your clients are able to log in with their carrier creden credentials one time, and it's going to create a live connection for Glovebox to jump in and pull over any policy documents or any, you know, policy details reflecting on that carrier side of things. So I did connect my travelers. You can see that monitoring tag up here. And it brings over a homeowner's policy for me. And you can see that this renewal document, the source of it is from the carrier. So that's one of our connections. The other kind of connection that you would just want to, you know, add those documents to the client's glove box, because we don't quite have that live feed where it's going to pull them over. So definitely for those more regional carrier carriers, you'll want to focus on, um, you know, really uploading those documents, getting your clients what they need. But with any of those carriers, they can connect and it will pull over just like it did with my travelers here. Um, let's see here, it looks like. Oh, great question, Kevin. So yes, prospects can absolutely be added to the app. Let me show you how to do that. So that is really the great thing about Glovebox. It does not just have to be current clients. It could be prospects. It could be referral partners, really anybody you can add. Um, so all you'll have to do is click this add client button next to the search. So if this is a prospect, you know, you'll just need their first last name and email. We will ask, you know, is this a personal lines or a commercial, but you do always have the ability to add both if you need to. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw my email in there. Um, something I do like to note when you are creating a new client is we pull, you know, from your AMS system. So if it is somebody that will, you know, eventually be put into your system, I always just recommend that you use that same email you put in your AMS. So that way, when we do get the data sync, it's going to, you know, merge those accounts rather than duplicate them. But once I click create, um, this is how you can kind of invite that prospect. So we'll send them an uh, email immediately to let them know they have an invitation and to accept it. Um, but it's kind of just going to be a blank shell of an account here. So if this was, you know, a prospect, this is where you'd want to add that policy for them. So whatever you're quoting them on, you can add multiple carriers, multiple policy types. Um, like I said, you could do personal or commercial lines. We'll ask if it's direct or agency billing. So the difference here is that agency billing, we are going to direct the client back to you as uh, to pay that bill direct billing, we're going to take them to the carrier to, you know, complete that payment. So that's the difference here. Um, but once I click direct, I can, you know, pick any of the carriers. So if you were quoting me on a Safeco policy, I could do that. Um, same with the policy types. There's a lot in here. So definitely search more than just these five. But yeah, let's say, you know, I'm your prospect and you're quoting me on a Safeco auto policy. Um, we are going to ask for that policy number, but you can always just type like quote um, auto or the client's last name, just as I did on my test account. And then you can always update the date. So you could even make it clear that this, you know, is just a quote. It expires in two days or whenever that quote's going to expire. But once I click save, it's just going to open up that uh, carrier card for me, just like I did on my travelers. And so this is where you can, you know, add that quote document for the prospect or any of those other resources that, um, you know, you want to give them. And then they're already in your app. So when they, you know, buy from you, everything's already set up for them. They're already a user. Um, they already kind of have that carrier here. And once, you know, that quote is completed, you can always delete it since it was manually added. It didn't come over from your AMS system. So just to keep it cleaner for that client. But yeah, absolutely. You can add prospects. You can either do that create new client feature like I just did, or you can send them the connect link either through email or tell them to, you know, click into your website and create an account. 
Um, you could utilize the refer agency button inside of the app in order to, you know, send it over to them. If you wanted to text it, you could do that. So absolutely add prospects, utilize this tech for prospecting if you would like to. Um, and then, you know, they can jump in and request a quote from you and we'll gather all of that information, their name, email, phone number. Um, so you can kind of know that this is a prospect, who they are, who you're reaching out to then. So great question there. Um, Absolutely, you always have the ability to add clients or add any policies. So let's say it is a brand new client, you just sold them today, you don't want to wait for that data sync to get, you know, imported into our system, you just want to add them right away, you can utilize that add client feature and get their account set up for them. Um, I am going to switch over in my test account over to the commercial side of things so you can see kind of the differences here. Um, really, it is very much the same as personal lines. So the only big differences here is going to be that direct and agency billing. So for those MGAs, third parties, uh, financing where the payment goes to, we are just going to direct the client back to you as the agency, um, direct to the carrier. The other big difference here is that we have a dedicated certificate section in our commercial side of things. So this is where you can mass upload certificates. You can drag and drop in bulk if you need to. So if you have a client that's working, you know, 50 jobs and they want access to everything, you can upload all of those certificates for them. Same with the other side of document upload that I was running through. We do give you the ability to you know, view, download, or delete. Um, we also have that edit functionality here as well. So if you need to update the title to make it clear what certificate goes with you know, what person or job or whomever it may be, um, the client will be able to search by certificate name inside the app, as well as you can search by certificate name here in HQ. Otherwise, down here where the policy is, that's just where you're going to want to add any of those other documents. So if it's a business auto, you'll want to attach those ID cards or those deck pages. So really, the otherwise, the functionality is the same. When you drag and drop, it's going to behave exactly like I had just walked you through. And then you can, you know, update the category, update the title if you need to. Um, but that's going to work very much the same. On the client side of things, when I jump into View Glove Box, excuse me, um, any client with both their personal and commercial policies with you, as long as that phone number and email are the same in your system, so on both accounts it's reflecting the same, the client is going to be able to toggle between the two, as well as in HQ, you'll be able to toggle between the two. So I'll jump over to the business side of things. You can see that dedicated certificate drop here. I can see all my certificates. We also do give your clients the ability to request a certificate from you. And this can be updated in HQ. So if you do have a COI request form or some kind of, you know, form intake that you like to use, we can plug that URL in. So that way, when clients go to request a certificate from you in app, it'll go over to the form just like I had here. Or if you don't have something, we're just going to display your agency's information. So that way they can get in touch with you to request that certificate. Um, otherwise, it very much looks the same. If it is a agency build uh, carrier, we are going to be displaying the agency's name here rather than the carrier. So I can really quickly add a policy so you can see that. Just so you can kind of see the difference of what the client is going to see with direct build versus agency build. So this is that agency build policy I just added. As you can see, we're showing Crimal Insurance as the carrier. Um, and then when I click in, we're going to be displaying your agency's logo as well. And then there'll be kind of a little a note here saying 
you know, billed by Primal Insurance, but billed by your agency. So that's the big difference there. Otherwise, they can, you know, if it's a direct billed carrier, they can jump in and pay their bill directly to that carrier. Um, kind of just depends on what the carrier offers. If they offer a claim site, then we can add that, then we will have that added in there. Um, or they can always log into the carrier directly through the app if they need to. But then down here, you can see all of my documents. Let me switch back over. Um, so a lot of the times what I hear from my agencies, which, you know, that's just the way it is, is currently we email our documents over. If a client calls in, they request something, we add it to an attachment and email it over. So this is kind of where you want to start thinking about your processes and how you can shift them over to Glovebox. You know, there really just is no need to email a document and attach it to an email because, you know, those get lost, you know, after a couple months, clients call back in, they need the same exact thing, um, as well as emails can get hacked. There's so many phishing scams. And when you're sending that sensitive information over email, you just would hate for anything to happen. So shifting your processes over when clients are calling in instead of, yep, I'll email that right over to you. Um, yep, no problem. I actually uploaded it to your account here with us. So I'm going to send you an invite going to go to your email as soon as you accept it and log in everything is going to be there for you so shifting you know processes over pointing people in the direction of the app tailoring your responses towards you know reminding clients that you do offer this self-service portal and that they can fulfill this need through the app they don't need to be calling into your agency in order to do so um I do want to make sure it looks like we don't have, oh, there we go. Can you show us one to assist a client who's not taking me not understand the map on the phone? Yeah, absolutely. So let me pull up the email that I received when I kind of added myself so we can walk through it step by step. So let me switch over. Sorry, change in screens here. So this is the email that's going to come over anytime that you um, either create a new client or send an invite through HQ. So if you send it through here or if you create a client like I did, this email is going to come over. It's going to be very much branded to your agency. So the subject line will have your agency's um, info, then your logo. But then I can just click this activate your account and it's going to take me over to a web browser version. So whether I am on my phone or on my desktop, it's going to take me to this web browser version. All I have to do is click activate your account. I, it already has my email since, you know, I sent that invite. So I'm good to go there. All I have to do is put my phone number in here. And while, you know, they're activating this account, we're just trying to gather all of that client info. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. I had a feeling that my phone number was on another account. Let me try my personal. There we go. And it's going to send me that pin. So all they, there we go. Perfect. All they have to do is input that pin code that we sent to them. And let's see here. That would be it. Eight, two. Okay. I don't know what went so wrong with that autofill, man. There we go. <laughs> um, and I actually think, in fact, that is the wrong pin as well. Talk about not tech savvy. Sorry, I apologize for kind of those errors on my part. But once they put that pin in, they are just going to get taken right into their account here. So since I put my personal phone number in there, I have it tied to a different test account, which is why all these other policies are showing up. But for your current clients, once they put that pin in, they're going to get taken and all of their policies are going to display exactly like so. 
kind of some, you know, troubleshooting that we see sometimes is as far as what can kind of go wrong with that connection. Just so you're aware, as if you do need to, you know, handhold a client a little bit, if they're not so techie, um, you want to make sure that the client is signing in with the email that is on file. So the one that we pulled over from your AMS system, the one that you send the invite to, you're going to, they want to make sure to sign in with that exact email, um, as well as the phone number. They want to sign in with that phone number that we have on file. Um, that's, you know, what is connected to their policies. So if they do use a different email, they might end up logging in and nothing's going to display because the policies aren't tied to that. So kind of some troubleshooting there, just kind of tips to help you as you're helping clients. So they definitely want to use that phone or email um, that is in the system. Once they do go through all those screens, we do a really great job of kind of walking them through it, especially if they're signing in and activating their account for the first time. Um, we'll walk them through it. If they qualify for any of our live policy monitoring carriers, we'll prompt them to, you know, connect so that way they get that set up. So it is pretty simple, but absolutely understand, um, you know, if you're helping a client that's not so techie, it can be a little bit confusing. So my biggest tips there are, like I said, just make sure that they're signing in with that email and phone number that's on file. So that way it's going to ensure that they connect properly and that all of their policies are going to display properly. Um, let me know if that didn't help, if you're still kind of have some questions about that, Mandy. Um, but hopefully that helps. They'll get the email, they'll click activate account, and they'll go through that web browser version. And then, you know, they can act, either just be on the desktop side of things or on the web on their phone, or we will prompt them to download the app on either iPhone or Android. So we have some screens in there that are going to kind of push them towards downloading the app. Um, any other questions? I'm kind of just keeping an eye on the chat. We have about five minutes left, so I want to make sure... If it's not a policy that downloads live to the app, how would they get started with their policies? Yeah, so if it's not a uh, carrier that downloads live, they're still going to have the ability to log into the carrier if they need to. It's just not going to create uh, create the live connection. So that's really where you would want to utilize the um policy document upload. So just so you can see here, because this is one of our carriers where we don't quite have that live connection, um, you can see there's nothing saying to activate that account. Um, I still am able to pay a bill, make a claim, um, anything I need to do on that carrier side of things, I'll take them directly to do so. And then I can always log into the carrier if I need to access those documents. Um, but then it's just not going to pull those documents live. So that's really where you want to utilize that document upload feature to, you know, get them what they need. So that way this, the experience is as seamless for them. But still able to, you know, pay a bill, make a claim, whatever it may be. Um, this carrier's bill pay uh, portal looks like it's broken. So I'm going to make a little note to my team here. Mutual. Um, but any carry that we have, we're just going to take that client where they need to go. So they can still jump in here and manage their policies. You would just want to upload those documents on the agency side. Great question. Yeah. So they will need to have a, you know, uh, connection credentials with the carrier and account with them in order to, you know, either log in or to create that live connection. Um, we do give them the ability to register for the first time if it is one of the live connections. So we give them the ability to register with that carrier if they need to do so. But um, yes, they will need to have that credentials in order to have, uh, you know, access. But with iPhones and Androids and even computers nowadays, it's super easy to just save that username and password and, you know, have it hooked up to their face ID so it's simple for them to log in. Any other questions? I'll kind of keep an eye out. Um, to wrap up here, I want to be mindful of everyone's time. I know we only have a 30-minute window today. So, a or just kidding, we do have an hour window. 
Um, but I don't believe that we will necessarily need to take up that full time, kind of just depends on your questions. Um, really what I think the biggest things that you can start implementing today are just those simple things of sending out invites as clients are calling in and uploading documents. You know, it is a lot. There's a lot of different things that you can utilize this tech for. Um, but really, if you just start with those two simple things of having it up in the background throughout the day, sending invites to clients and uploading their documents, I'm sure you'll see your adoption grow because it really is just those usage points. It's like that gym membership we always say, you know, you can buy the gym membership, but if you don't go and work out, then, you know, you're not going to reach your goal. You're not going to get stronger, or lose weight, whatever it is. So kind of the same here. The more you're in here working it, the more that you're utilizing it and implementing it into your daily processes, into your agency's processes, um, the more, the better results you're going to see. So I just definitely recommend that if there's, if there's one thing that you take out of this today is just to jump in there and just start using it, start inviting clients, start uploading those documents. Um, a couple of resources that are available to you in HQ um, are Glovebox University. So this is where that kind of troubleshooting center is going to be, uh, where there's a lot of great learning resources. I'm sure you guys kind of all came out here to find that live training since you're on this today. Um, but I recommend, you know, checking out some resources in here, especially this managing your clients. This is where we're going to have a lot of great articles just about those, you know, processes I was going through before, sending invites, creating new clients, adding documents. Um, but I like to point this this out as a good resource. We have our live trainings here. So if you want to join next month or in a couple months, or if you have any new hires, um, great place to send them. Uh, also down here at the bottom, this little chat bot is going to go directly to, you know, our team. So it'll either go to your dedicated ASM or it'll go to someone on the team if they're busy. But this is just a great way to get connected with us if you need to, especially if you if you're in here excuse me, especially if you're in here and you're noticing something, you can just really quickly chat us and we'll be able to get back to you, you know, pretty much immediately if someone is available. So great resources for that. Um, kind of want to keep the chat open for you, you know, any questions, but that is kind of what I wanted to cover today. I don't anticipating this full hour. So, um, you know, I'll stay on here, but that's what I wanted to cover. So if you don't have any further questions, feel free to hop off, but I'll kind of just open it up to questions now. Keeping an eye. Can inactive policies be deleted? That is a great question. So we are in the process of creating an enhancement to be able to delete those inactive policies. Currently, how our system functions is when the data gets imported, if a policy does get imported, so it was marked active at one point, it is going to remain in that client's glove box, um, just kind of how the current system is. We do already have, you know, an enhancement being worked on to where we're going to be able to delete those policies once they've gone inactive or if it's canceled, you know, midterm before the effective date. So stay tuned for that. Um, but in the meantime, anything imported, it does actually remain in there. But you can always, if you manually add a policy, you can um, delete any manually added policy. Just those AMS ones that kind of stick around just because of the way our system is. So great question. Gonna keep it open. Um, another thing I just kind of thought of for a second as I was talking about those accessibility points with you all in the beginning um, with the website, the email signatures. Um, I do want to show you where, if you haven't done so already, under this resources tab, we have this QR code monkey. So you can jump out here and generate a QR code for yourself. All you'd want to do is grab that connect link on the overview page and put it in here. 
that way, you know, clients can scan it if you do any events, networking events, or even if you're just out there prospecting, this can be a great resource as far as creating that QR code. Um, this site in specifically, you could add a logo if you wanted to add your agency's logo, but then this will just generate that QR code for you so you can use it. I wanted to point that out just on that kind of accessibility piece creating all those points of connection. Um, another great tip is to add it to your on hold music. So that way when clients are calling you and they're sitting right there on hold, you can say, hey, trying to do this, you don't need to be on hold with us. You can do that through our app. Go out and you know download it or click the uh, button on our website to access your client portal. So great tips, a lot of different you know creative things that you can use to really promote your app to your clients. I'll just kind of keep talking as, you know, I'll look for questions here, but I do want to also point out in this resources tab, this glove box on Facebook. Um, this is our Facebook group of all of our current agencies. So this can also be a really great resource for you, especially if you like that kind of community forum type of thing. You can pose questions, you know, ask what other agencies are doing, how they're being successful, what's working, what's not working. Um, you'll see Andy, one of our co-founders in here a lot, he'll pose questions or just, you know, shout out successful agencies, anything like that. So this is a great resource for you um, if you like that kind of community aspect of things. Perfect. Well, as I mentioned, uh, that is what I wanted to cover today. If you're still feeling, you know, unclear about anything, definitely put it in the chat, or if you prefer reaching out to your ASM afterwards, uh, we can help you out there. But I appreciate you all taking the time to join me today. And like I said, if you're going to take away two things, it's just to start jumping in there, utilizing it, sending those invites out. You'll really see your adoption soar. You know, I know, you know, it takes that couple extra seconds, but the client doesn't see that on their end. They don't see the work that gets put in. They just see that final product. So absolutely just taking those couple extra minutes to get your clients, you know, supplied with what they need. You'll see that adoption start soaring. And then ultimately that your service burden will be reduced because you're not going to be getting all those calls for things that clients can do through the app.